used to it. But let's talk about fragments real quick because they're actually not too complex, but they're a little weird. And I feel like a lot of people don't use them when they're really handy actually. So here's what a fragment looks like. So basically you have your GraphQL type here. So this is the GraphQL type is person. And then this is a custom name you give. They call it name parts. And then you pick the fields that you want. First name, last name. And then you can use fragments for queries and mutations and subscriptions. And it looks like this. You say dot, 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 name parts. And basically what happens is now when I select this person, it's also gonna select the first name and the last name field along with the avatar. So you can think about this as the spread operator in like objects in JavaScript, very similar to that. And so it's gonna put those there. And the reason why they're useful is I can use fragments in multiple queries. So let's say my get person uses name parts, but also my create person uses it. And then, uh, I don't know, my delete person also uses the fragment. So that way we fetch the same fields back. Uh, and then let's say we no longer have a last name. We now, in a first name and a last name, we just rename it to full name. Uh, then we can change this. We can type full name here. And then we don't actually need to update all the different queries that use this fragment. So it's just a nice way to be able to make sure all your queries, mutations, and subscriptions are uh, using the same fields and how you can update them all at once if a type changes. So I like to use them in pretty much whenever I'm sharing fields across queries or mutations. And then subscriptions as well, but I don't use them as much. All right, 